Okay, hi again. This is um, this is going to be just an extension, uh, an expansion on one of the items, one of the uh, things I talked about in the video I just made, uh, explaining Gaia humanism. And so I'm going to take one thing at a time and try to expand on it to explain it a little better. So this one is about uh, human sexuality, sexual homosexuality, and I will explain it in the following way. I will. What I'm explaining is how to how to understand it, how to create a basis of uh, of logic, uh, a base of reasoning uh, upon which the the argument or the dissertation can be understood for its own logic for its own reasoning so this is how I will explain what I have come to understand sort of melding together throughout my life different sciences and things that I've seen we have learned as a human species into one um, summarized understanding human sexuality not in the absolute sense but we one could say is can be comprehended as having um, the um, psychological or uh, sociological aspect cultural aspect how we live it how we talk about it, how we we are casual about it, how we understand it in serious morality that gets um, taught socially. Um, it's got um, a scientific aspect, the biological chemical aspect, how we're wired, how we're designed uh, anatomically as a species through evolution. And it's got, um, to a lesser degree, in the case of general human sexuality, a psychological aspect, still never, nonetheless very much present, um, meaning we are, for example, turned on, perhaps initially before a full maturity, uh, one could argue, by things that relate us, that we relate more to things that have to do with our developmental years, how our mom treated us, how our dad treated us, and that kind of wakes up something in the way a lover uh, will turn us on or what they will do that we're attracted to. So there's a psychological aspect. There's a um, biological, um, biological aspect, and there's a sociological aspect, which is basically how we teach each other to think about it, how what values we transmit. I think I, I jumbled it up a little bit, but I started by ex um, uh, describing human sexuality so that when I say the same thing about human homosexuality, we don't understand it as being too different to human sexuality. Human homosexuality is an expression of the species of human sexuality. So first, in the bigger our, uh, subject matter is human sexuality. Within human sexuality occurs human homosexuality which is something that may be expressed or experienced manifested by anybody across the board male or female who's a human being and who is endowed with human sexuality seems simple enough yet if you listen to some of the explanations that are going around today uh, we talk about the right to to express yourself freely, uh, 
and a civil right. To be, why? Because it's who you are. And when you say who you are, you start saying, yeah, well, you are what? You are a man, you're a woman, you are American, you're tall, you're... There are things that are either you're born with or you're very close to not being able to change. You will always be an American. If you were born in the States and lived the first 20 years of your life in the States, no matter that you spend the rest of your life in Spain, uh, there's an American uh, of you that will never go away. So there are things that are very close to the purpose of the verb to be, and there are things that we use the verb to be for that are not in, in, ingrained in who we are. Like, I am tired. I'm not always tired, and I wasn't born tired, uh, but I'm tired right now, okay? Um, it'd be interesting if in the evolution of a new language for the world we would create a few different verbs to be uh, to kind of clear clear that all up a little bit better. So when it comes to uh, homosexuality, we really are uh, sort of ransacking the use of the verb to be because we're arguing uh, almost to the level of life or death uh, something that really just happens as an expression of um, human sexuality. And again, we can understand human homosexuality uh, much better if we see it as uh, a space, a sphere, sort of say, an area, which is what life expression, living expression is. It's, it's a movement. It's an, it's an organic, constantly ch changing organism, whether we're speaking socially, collectively, or individual. We, nothing that is alive and breathing is the same last year uh, as it will be in a few years and probably not in the same place either. So it's um, very good to try to develop an understanding of uh, uh, understanding human nature through a, a three-dimensional space. And this three-dimensional space for understanding human homosexuality, um, again, we find three areas. We find the biological, chemical, which um, of course has to do with everything that comes through genetics, through our DNA, and through the development in, our, in the womb of our mother. We have the psychological development, the expression of sexuality after we are born, um, that has to do with our developmental years, mainly, and then continues. We continue to be psychologically affected, or we react, rather, to a society through psychological mechanisms. And then there's the sociological. The sociological speaks of uh, cultural education, social education, things that are allowed, are taught, and we learn, and they seep into what would be the psychological aspect. So if we understand... Um, human homosexuality as diffusion or the simultaneous existence in one single thing that we're talking about of these three areas we will do much better than uh, creating camps that f fight against each other head to head and and say you're wrong this is the he's one of the bad ones he's one of the ones who commie he's not a commie he's a capulet <laughs> you know he's a capulet he's a montague somebody's got to die you know <laughs> Uh, that's uh, we're talking about something that we all have and understanding it better behooves all of us in the context of uniting the species not in terms of separating humankind um, and homosexuality certainly doesn't separate us it it simply is part of human sexuality now to understand the phenomena and it's not a bad word to use homosexuality as a phenomenon because it is a phenomenon it is something that does not typically occur it occurs and there seems to be circumstances there seems to be spaces that are uh, smaller in size and occurrence compared to the majority whether we're looking at uh, the animal kingdom or the way in which human civilization has treated it and throughout history it's really a phenomenon it's not the norm it seems that we're trying to force it into uh, 
um, a symmetrically equal category it seems what we're trying we have been trying to do but it certainly isn't and with all the evidence of all of history uh, all over the world pro uh, goes to show that it's a phenomenon so the occurrence of uh, the homosexual phenomenon in the species has to do with these with uh, understandings that involve and look at each one of these three areas the biological, the sociological, and the psychological. Now, the sociological, what does the sociological speak of? The sociological speaks of how we have had the cultural notion of um, homosexuality. It could be starting with a simple facts such as, wait, a wedding has to drive right through my street now. It's Saturday. Okay. The sociological has to do with cultural education. Uh, it has to do with uh, a father telling a, a boy, don't be a sissy, or a mother uh, saying, be a man, don't be a little girl. It has to do with uh, being popular as an adolescent because you flamboyantly express homosexuality. All of the things that are communicated through visual and uh, cultural or uh, means of any kind, it all plays into the sociological part. The psychological part uh, contains a lot of sciences that we are, we are trying to, we have been quashing, we have been, in the name of an opposite uh, current, we have been saying they're whatever, they're Catholic evil people, or Freud was, um, was an egotistical mis 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 uh, misogynistic, misogynist, or, you know, in the name of taking a side, we have been stepping all over things that we have learned, um, and we had learned them perfectly well. Uh, the psychological aspect is actually the most interesting part of understanding the phenomena of homosexuality. So we'll leave that for last. The first part, the biological and the chemical. The biological and the chemical uh, could have to do with uh, stuff that we already are looking at. The problem with the science per scientific pursuit of homosexuality is that we're trying to find the single explanation. The single explanation is our mistake. It sets us up to oppose an opposite camp and say that something else was wrong. Well, we're learning a lot of things and all have to be included. Nature seems to have uh, a predisposition to, uh, in contrast, uh, not a contrast, uh, I don't know if a predisposition, but a, a mechanism they're discovering that it seems that if so many males or if the mother was violent during pregnancy of, of, or if there are already so many males, the youngest one will tend to come up more prone to, and this is the key word, tendency, prone, um, apt to tendency, not towards one opposite thing, but towards it being or something developing. A very subtle notion of understanding and has to be uh, gripped well. You know, you don't say, uh, when we're, th we're very miseducated now and we're saying, well, if a mother was violent during pregnancy, it could be that the child will come out gay or is prone to homosexuality, as if that is the, the pitfall that awaits the ad uh, on the adversary's side. It's not like that. What we need to understand this is, um, we, we need to understand homosexuality as, is a field of development because we are living, changing, growing organisms. And so it is a field of development in which many things can happen in the future. And so the same sentence, the mother was violent and aggressive or hated her husband, what have you, during preg pregnancy had an issue again with men and apparently there were hormones that were created in the uterus. Da -da -da -da. That means that the child that was born 
was more likely to be influenced by the other things, all the host of other things that together can conspire to uh, setting up a tendency to like, to be more curious, to be interested, to feel more satisfaction, more reward for various areas. It's very complex. It's a spatial understanding. It is not an either or understanding. This is very important to really grasp. Um, so we have the biological, the chemical. Uh, we have the psychological. The psychological is very f is interesting because it's actually quite, it has beautiful aspects of understanding how the self develops. And it takes us to perhaps appreciate that homosexuality is not something terrible and aberrant, that bad, that we don't want to look at or we must hide or, or we must force each other to, to glorify and accept it because that's the only other option, either hate it or glorify it and this constant, um, you know, yay or nay thing has to disappear and we have to be wise and knowledgeable about understanding our own homos our own sexuality not our homosexuality homosexuality is small within the greater understanding of human sexuality and so we're in the as in the psychological aspect psychologically what happens i explained in that long video i just made that when the baby is born it identifies its own gender with one of the of the parents immediately. So if you're a little boy, you start looking at your dad like, ooh, you know, that's, that's gonna be me, and right now he's too strong, you know, I better, I'm gonna hang out with mom a little bit because that's like, whoa, way over the top, right? Well, all these things start happening in the, in the developmental mind of the, of the baby, but in any case, eventually, each gender has a um, unsubstitutable, uh, relation bond to the same gender of its parent and through it a lot of uh, psychological development happens one of them is affirming our own self and so if the father for example is always saying oh you're useless I don't know why I even had a boy I always wished I had girls uh, I don't trust you get out of my face etc etc what that child will grow up uh, learning in his own mind is that I uh, was will basically grow up learning that there are other like I said there um, there are aspects of resiliency because we're wired to learn and absorb from our parents but we're primarily wired to learn and grow before we go seek our our, our our most important relationship, which is a boy with its dad, a, a girl with its mom. If there is rejection by the one that's supposed to start shaping you into a little boy who is your father, we are resilient enough to go start paying attention to other ones that look like us, an uncle, an older brother, an older male. And so we will continue to try to shape ourselves. But that main direction where we are, that we're bouncing off is really bad and it will have a lot of effect. If our self-development doesn't, doesn't start um, arriving at certain levels, it nears adolescence with substantial amounts of uh, non-completion, of um, inadequate, inadequate self-images, what have you. I'm sure a psychologist could explain this much better than me. But what happens is the body does not wait. The body is on, on schedule and it will get to develop to, to starting a new phase for that body even though the mind is still dra lagging behind some parts that needed to fortify, develop, strengthen, mature. And so it seems the theory is, uh, I don't know, actually this is one that I don't know if it has been uh, already elaborated by anybody else. Since the most logical and sensible source of self 
generating development is the opposite gender of our dad when we're little it seems that we can and, and we still have parts that are lagging when we made a jump we've been catapulted onto another social level and now we have sexuality that has blossomed in our bodies uh, it seems that the mind which is still trying to work on developing the self continues to look for mentor father what have you um, acceptance and, and inclusion by other peers is, is very it's the basis of all this you know it all happens within the context of being um, included into the the peer group of other males so if you in other words if you don't didn't have a father just to make it simple but you had enough other f boy friends male friends that thought the world of you and and you know they all looked up to you and you you know there are, maybe they will take care of that will take care of developing one aspect of uh, if you soloed uh, and ventured into the world with a lot of defying, male-proving um, behavior. Thanks to that group of males, it may actually develop parts that were supposed to be developed earlier by your dad mainly and older brothers. And so uh, all of these uh, uh, sources of self-nurturing will start being received from the other male. So in other words, it's like we continue looking for more juice to come to the self-development. Um, and so this basically is a theory that we are, we find homosexuality very nurturing or comforting to, and, and in fact, it's all interesting because it, it seems to create a different science of understanding homosexuality. Because what also happens is that we may become comfortable in that. And so this is like a, a, a it becomes like a, um, like a band-aid that instantly feels good and it t does other parts of our body that, you know, that feel good or uh, um, put into activity parts of life that we're also wanting to be living and so it feels like it fits and it uh, addresses uh, something that's missing but in reality at the same time it might be stagnating us in a space and the part that needed to develop doesn't continue to develop and this seems to happen when you throw in sexuality so if the mind is able to discern what is admiration support friendship but still in a paternal sense the friend or the mentor or the older males continue to say yeah but you do it on your own they you know, I, I accept your tenderness i accept you but you know every once in a while they give him a shove to get him to prove himself to face his challenges on his own then it may succeed in what the mind is trying to continue to do which is to develop the parts that were lagged behind but as soon as we fall into just putting the sugar in there and feeling good and letting it's almost like giving somebody else a steering wheel and letting them in our mind in our psychological mind it seems that by audulating or or falling what some males gay males may th well to call them gay yeah uh, um, referred to as falling in love, you know, it becomes uh, a different category, a different kind of falling in love. While in a male that falls in love with a woman, falling in love fulfills a sense of purpose and he feels that he's more complete and he has a reason to live and some, you know, something to look forward to and all this. In a male that is still seeking that is very satisfied by homosexuality for what they call falling in love with a male actually may be about not feeling the pain anymore not feeling a void not feeling a lack of development or insecurity or isolation and in fact if you look at the homosexual at the gay community a lot of it speaks of having others and not uh, having a support system you know but it's all very interesting and 
What is interesting about um, homosexuality as a human phenomena of human sexuality is that it itself, and in this it is different to human sexuality, because while human sexuality, if you could draw it, you could see it perfectly uh, with its access that aims at the fusion of two biologies to create another being and proliferate the, the species, propagate the species, what have you. In homosexuality, the expression of homosexuality seems to be made by the um, a completely different necessity seems to be centered around or is sent is at its center is not the creation of another being or the fusion of uh, of two complementary sexes or genders although we seem to be wanting to try and that makes total sense that we want to spring back to what we more deeply intuitively understand as natural and so we want to forge in the homosexual community something that resembles complementary couple having children what have you um, but w it seems that we are also very blind to what we're actually doing we're subconsciously trying to not be gay if that makes uh, just to oversimplify it so um, the phenomena of homosexuality is fascinating because it is in itself sort of um, a two-headed a two-headed um, creature it cannot separate these two tendencies this is very important to understand it's fundamentally important to understand in the understanding of homosexuality because it explains the contradiction of the world it explains the contradiction in families it explains the un inability to reconciliate and the insistence in forging and wanting to create some kind of reconciliation. It is unreconcilable because it itself is two forces, which makes all the sense in the world. Because in one being, there is an evolutionary matrix or a, a much more primitive and ancient design, which is to complement with the... the um, the opposite gender, but at the same time, the ex the manifestation of homosexuality through the conspiring of these three areas that I explained before, which uh, propels the individual to um, be attracted to experimenting, to trying it, to feeling a reward, to feeling satisfied, to being o more okay with trying it again, then less okay if, if, if the conspiracy did not succeed in s rewarding as much. So what happens is you have males that whose conspiracy do not, who would be a conspiracy of these three sectors, and let's say they say they make themselves try homosexuality. I'm just gonna do it, I'm open-minded, I've lived in Holland, you know, I, I know what's up, it's fun, the world is all about pleasure, blah, blah, blah they discover the biological satisfaction is there there's nothing we can do about the chemical biological part of it that will be satisfying the sociological we're okay with because we always believed in gays and their rights and and uh, polyamory and having fun and drugs and blah, blah 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 and so it's all about living and living it up and so so sociologically we are also enjoying so we have two things already. Psychologically, eh, for the straight guy, it feels more like camaraderie, two bros that got closer than they wanted to, but hey, in the name of sex and good times, they did it. So in that individual, although he had a, a fun, nearly almost completely fulfilling experience, his tendency to want to do it again is not as strong as a person who all of a sudden he was felt so loved during that sexual encounter that all of these other problems were satisfied were rewarded he felt happy because he didn't understand why but something made him feel really happy because all of these things were um, 
attended to. There's a huge fight going on outside. Okay, and so th th he wants to try it again. And in fact, there's a whole community that's saying, girl, I'll teach you how to do it, you know. This is how you gotta squeeze it, and da 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 And so there's a whole sociological aspect that encourages it. There's a whole civil political thing now that encourages it. So the occurrence of social homosexuality, um, before I say that, there's another thing that is goes at the heart of arguments that people are having all the time, and which is sexuality. You know, people say it's not your business, people can do it. Um, the whole idea of passing laws that that uh, prohibit saying anything against homosexuality in school or laws that attempt to punish it unsuccessfully in society in other countries. Where, do all, where does this sector come from? This sector comes from the fact that sexuality, and this is what we're negating, this is what I'm getting at, sexuality is learned our ideas besides the biological part and the psychological part but the, a big part of sexuality um, comes from what society teaches us to believe and to accept or to reject or to understand th through logic and reasoning so what does this mean this means that we are absolutely accountable and responsible for teaching truth now it seems that the pro um, uh, gay community agenda and the LGBT and all this stuff is absolutely clear with this. They feel they they, they go overboard their right to uh, now they do it in the name of not suffering violence, but they're actually paralleling or discrimination. They're actually paralleling a right that we all have to be educated on the truth through society regarding sexuality. We're not allowing, what our big mistake in the, in the Western-led uh, thinking of this is, is that we're not allowing people who have misgivings, aversion, doubts, um, regrets, to also be equally entitled to expressing themselves socially. We are suppressing that because we think that that is the source of an evil. In reality, it's not. I don't want to say the other way around, but it is not evil. It is sincerity. It is absolute sincerity, and we're not letting them be sincere. Um, and why does this occur? Why does this double-headed singularity occur? Because if you think about it in the individual, what happens is, the singular, the, the, let's say, let's take the individual who's more interested in homosexuality than if nobody had ever brought, brought it up in his life. And so it's somebody who seems to be curious and wants to try it and what have you. And the individual who's thinking um, or experiencing the phenomenon of homosexuality, they are simultaneously and singularly present to configurations, to life uh, physiological, psychological, uh, sociological configurations present in a singular expression, the expression of homosexuality. In that expression of homosexuality, which is, so if it is, basically it is centered, it's like if you could make a disc looking at uh, human sexuality, and in the center is a a spore or an axis or a column which is the the union of genitals let's say and the procreation of a child and you put homosexuality contained within human sexuality and the union of two genitals or you know close enough um, it's centered but it's not in the center of it it's way off to a side it's almost like um, like the nucleus of a cell that is all, um, all the way almost to the wall of the cell. If you can visually understand it that way, you can see that within 
you can see it better, you can understand it better. Within human homosexuality occurs also the aversion of homosexuality. Now, what we're very poor in having articulated is that there's a natural aversion to homosexuality which occurs in every human being in human sexuality because the design of human sexuality is designed as we all know it for these two things to happen not to stick it in the wrong place but to stick it in the right place and so the body somehow has evolved together perhaps with the experience of homosexuality could be or as a reaction to the very intentful design of human sexuality, a natural aversion. This is what actually homophobia is. Homophobia is not something wrong uh, that people are l taught by the Catholic Church. It is something that occurs naturally in the male mind in particular uh, because a woman doesn't have this problem of needing to put it somewhere and anything will do. Um, but the male must have wrestled with this a great deal more than women have throughout the course of evolution. And so there seems to have evolved a fear. And I think if every gay, quote-unquote, gay man or male was completely sincere and had perfect recollection, Everybody will tell you that their first time they tried it or thought about it or experienced that they brushed up, welled up a fear, an aversion. And many gay guys will tell you, yeah, I had, but you know, I got over it and they taught me the second time it, I didn't even realize, you know, whatever, and they learned to overcome it. We educate ourselves to overcome something that comes up. It is not. Um, socially taught. It is not taught by morality or the church. Uh, that's a big mistake. Now, the church may have emphasized something. The church may have uh, strongly uh, uh, exaggerated and underlined or, con or condemned you for doing something that was already uh, mm, coming up in the natural male mind. That is the proper order to understand it. Sexual aver homosexual aversion is something that comes up. It is finicky, it is whimsical, it seems that it's not uh, rooted very strongly. It can, we can easily tweak it with ideas and finding more pleasure than aversion and before you know it we're looking for it and we don't care. But there seems to be, and we're totally, entirely and completely honest with ourselves, it seems it's something, a smidgen, a whiff of something negative, never truly ever leaves. And I'm not talking morally uh, or fears that have to do with uh, society. It is something biological. It seems to be it's something that's never quite, we tend to, there's a part of us that seems to, that seems to we would flow back to heterosexuality more easily. And people from the gay community would say, yeah, but it was uncomfortable. I was, yeah, well, you know, perhaps the discomfort has to do with other fears and other things that we never saw, identified as such, never, we had a society that did not, was not looking for it. We basically built the anti-understanding um, of this other, more natural, mm, greater understanding of human um, homosexuality and um, but it's very interesting so what happens is because there is a simultaneous uh, aversion and interest also because in the completely straight 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 all the way a guy that you know take it from wherever or take him from whatever example you want to take that has never been thought of it he is completely capable of finding pleasure and that has to do with the biological, chemical part of his sexuality. So you see, it's, it's almost like everything is juxtaposed over 
itself and there isn't a wrong or right or a this camp or that camp and in some uh, instances we are touching on that we speak of gradients uh, but unfortunately the gradient of or, or, or the degrees of how gay or how straight are you all seem to serve the purpose of dividing males in gay or straight and that is not how it needs to be understood it needs to be understood that there is present in every male a desire to perhaps uh, also not go there or not like it change her mind always was averted uh, felt aversion towards it never sat completely right with them as much as there is also um, a part that would discover that they actually could enjoy it so you could simplify this as by saying everybody's bisexual but that really doesn't do much for resolving the social problems we have and for the injustices that we're committing um, in, um, towards, towards many who are in, in the dark trying to be truthful about things that society is not allowing them to say and we just made a horrible, it's a horrible mess, it's a disaster it's a complete disaster the way we are going about uh, all wrong and ultimately we're not ordering something that needs to be so this is perhaps the most difficult part to understand about uh, homosexuality in the Gaia humanist context and it is that there is an order a first a second and two and three doesn't mean opposite or wrong so even though optimally the optimal ex most natural most relaxed most broadly comfortable main aim of sex human sexuality and evolution is for a man to find his complementation with the opposite gender and the woman to find her complementation with the opposite gender homosexuality does naturally occur and because people have lived it doesn't mean that they're evil they're doing something wrong they need to be punished they're hurting anybody uh, we have to understand it as something that can occur that can happen but most importantly we have to understand homosexuality starting at the social level so if people are finding it are insisting that they really just kind of only want to have homosexual sexuality we need to understand them by understanding in what society their lives developed not by thinking about whether that individual is doing something right or wrong or if people believe it's right or wrong to be or not be this be or not be does not exist we have to understand how people are through how society and the world has educated to believe to feel and to need to find satisfaction to find reward and what not understanding society and individuals in this way is very lamentably doing or regrettably doing is that men or women who are intelligent or uh, you know they take care of maturing certain things when they're younger and they start learning and maybe they get their mind and their maturity to a point where they can tell themselves but I really wasn't happy living that way they do not come into a world that says oh okay one that continued the journey to where, where they see that they really want to do whatever they can to continue the trajectory towards the optimal expression of their body which is to complement with the opposite gender and continue doing whatever they need to do which are they are completely in the dark because of course if you're kind of dwelling in an area which is made of two simultaneous things it's going to be very difficult to discern a clear path when you are half of you is always pulling you and yet we can't we shouldn't punish that tendency that is continuing to ask well but I'm not done there I'm still looking for a daddy I'm still looking for a mommy so we're very unintelligent socially and because we're so unintelligent socially to what is actually happening to people in the world regarding sexual their human homosexuality 
we are we do not have we are completely uh, deprived of a knowledge a cultural knowledge a scientific knowledge a social knowledge that would say oh yeah well you know this is what theoretically it would be we would be okay with it we would be happy that they managed to swim out of it on their own and that they're now asking for help and so we would know where to put out that hand other male friends um, tr giving a, somebody to, uh, a little extra responsibility showing that we I don't know this, these are just examples but we would be a society or a culture that knows what to do for these people that um, change their mind which is their absolute right as loud and as important and as significant if not more because we established what is the optimal already for them to um, leave homosexuality as opposed to be accepted and uh, loved because they want to live in homosexuality or with homose or experiencing homosexuality. That part we more than took care of. But it seems that we're obsessively dwelling in that part because we don't know how to handle the other half. We just simply shut up the other half. We want to say that countries are evil because they're being sincere because they're they're passing laws that say we don't know about this this is the best we can do we don't want it close to our schools and uh, we don't want pornography with homosexuality close to our schools others give you five days of jail you know we're very clumsy we're very ignorant as far as understanding it that other half that would be knowing how to receive people that want to leave homosexuality right now is non-existent and in its place what we have is a complete denial of it which is what we're coming from you could say in america we're coming from a country that rejected it and, and discriminated what have you but instead of saying from the beginning let's receive this uh, two-sided creature and handle it accordingly because it is unique in human physiology this way there's nothing else in our human physiology in our human mind in our human body that is got two halves simultaneously in a single in a singularity everything else has one purpose one straight line whether you eat to nourish yourself whether you learn to grow whether you um, you know ex uh, develop your muscles to perform a task and you know uh, and you take on a sport to become better at that task what have you uh, everything is linear and sexuality also is linear but homosexuality is the only thing that has two spheres in a singularity this is something that we have never known uh, we have known it but we didn't understand that mm, understanding it as such some people have realized that it's kind of a, a freakishly uh, uh, polar thing that happens in men maybe but we've never gone further and we've never been able to socially uh, address it as such because if we had the thing is intuitively what's interesting is that we did know intuitively without before we were forcing logically clumsy clumsily constructed idealisms we intuitively without anybody telling us how we kind of knew that a boy was growing up a little soft or was hanging out around his sisters too much and you know uncles and we sort of took him to a place where they we kind of toughed him up a little bit sort of like elephants where they they push the baby elephant to kind of try harder um, the thing is we didn't possess the scientific understanding today with this today we have the material to construct this scientific understanding as a concept I have described and we could theoretically build a, um, a science a an understanding science of our sexuality and our homosexuality that would reflect in a fair way or in a more um, a truer way of expressing it in the civil 
sector and the legal sector that is not so brutally ignorant as we are today. That we're, we're, doing our, we're doing monstrous things in the name of our idealisms. We're cajoling uh, through our very parents' uh, children to go have sex change operations and we're, we're, thinking, we're celebrating how cool, how funny, and how interesting it is to think uh, so, so playfully or freakishly and so our children are proposing that they feel this way maybe to win the acceptance of a parent that doesn't seem to talk to them about anything else but these things that are occurring in society and so because the child comes up to the parent and says uh, you know I think I feel like I'm happy if I was a girl you would love me more we're seeing it we're seeing it we're starting to talk about it this guy Jenner um, he has made a living sacrifice of his own life uh, to get the point across. I did all this and yet I, my mind is still there where I feel I'm not letting go of that. I still feel that some things I validate. And, I, and what do we do? We, um, Ellen DeGeneres said that he's got problems because he still can't jump all the way in. Uh, you know, so... As you can see, we're not really gelling. As uh, I, every other physiological aspect of society is perfectly comprehended. We understand our digestive system. We understand our respiratory system. We understand pretty much what a, a, a good, healthy development of the psyche and our psychology is. Everything seems to be understood as to what is optimal and best for us. But it seems that when it comes to our homosexual, our sexuality. We are really uh, a little confused and fighting against one I mean and trying to forge uh, something that never existed based on a construct of ideals. Um, everything else about our physiology, our body is substantiated by physical evidence of things that have demonstrated. More of that takes to better health, more optimal expression of the physical body less of that makes us impoverished in a physical uh, through a physical expression we have physical evidence of what is optimal and correct for our body for just about everything but when it comes to homosexuality and sexuality it seems that we're totally okay with winging it winging a construct of idealisms and it seems that we have uh, deluded ourselves to believe that it is because we are such an advanced intellectual democratic society that is just leading the world in the vanguard of idealisms and sadly um, the only the what has had to happen are aberrant cases of children that who were forced by society and their family to go into hormone therapy and then committed suicide and uh, because they were ultimately always unhappy and Bruce Jenner and what have you and we're still fighting it. We are so blind to our simplest truth right before our right under our nose that we're still denying that these alarms are going off. We're incarcerating children that are giving them life in prison because they kill people, yes, but you know, at one point are we going to uh, be accountable for raising our children the way we do? and create societies and institutions that reflect that, that don't make an example by giving life in prison or the death penalty to a 16-year-old when clearly he came out messed up because of the way he was raised and the society that he was raised. At what point, at what point are we going to say, stop, let's not punish the clear victim of the situation and see how we need to change? what we're doing wrong. When is America going to turn around and say what are we doing wrong that we're sending to the death, to the, to the electric chair, a 17 year old, a 14 year old to life in prison and we're having children mutilate their genitals and putting them on hormone therapy for the rest of their lives. When is America going to say stop? This is a clear signal that we're not going about things the right way.